Good evening, everyone. Today is February the 27th, 2020, and it is approximately 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You're listening to the Digital Pirate Podcast, where we primarily discuss everything in technology and how you can build your own digital empire in the cloud. Tonight is episode 34, and we're going to be talking about how you can be a digital contractor of sorts by building and selling things such as apps, Windows programs, I know the title said apps, but we are going to be discussing uh, building and selling Windows programs, scripts like software as a service type things, and Android apps. And as usual, you can find all of the resources that I mention on the podcast on the episode page at digipire.com slash episode 34. And as usual, you can find all of our podcasts at digipire.com slash podcast. And if you want to ask me any questions, you can do so at digipire.com slash ask in my part of the world it's been very windy and cold hopefully you are staying warm wherever you may be but regardless i will be with you in just a few seconds so we can go over everything that i would like to cover tonight i'll be right with you Okay, a little bit of news before we get started. News as pertaining to this podcast, I guess. I This is going to mainly affect the, those of you who listen to the podcast live. And for, for the... I'm, excuse me, I can't quite get it out. I'm moving, moving it up until... I'm moving it up to 9 p.m. Eastern Time because of other engagements and other things that I've committed to as of a few days ago, actually. So I can't be, I can't do two things at once. Um, Well, sometimes I can, if I can create a, or build a script or a bot or a new bot to to do it for me. But I've actually thought about that. (laughs) Or actually having someone do it for me, but, I'm moving the podcast, if, you're, if you listen to it live, if you don't listen to it live, it won't affect you, but I'm moving it from nine or moving it from 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time to 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. It'll probably remain that way for quite a while, if not permanently, but I will let you know for those of you who listen live. And for those of you who don't listen live, you can, of course, find... You can listen to the podcast on most of your the major platforms. You can listen to it on Spreaker, Google Podcast, iTunes, and all of that stuff. Now, if there's one that you that you can't, if there's a platform that you use that we don't upload to, you can always go to the episode page or digitalpire.com slash podcast and find it there. So some other news I decided to, as far as the podcast is concerned, that is, I decided to shorten the podcast to 30 minutes for the time being or for the foreseeable future and cut out a a couple of the segments because, like I said, I've committed to other projects that are taking more of my time and I still want to, to do this because I enjoy doing it. But... I didn't get a lot of positive feedback on those segments, and I think it's just redundant. And if there's something worth notable in the news that relates to the topic that I'm discussing on that particular day, I'll mention it. 
but otherwise I'm not going to, to have a new segment. And I will have, I'm not going to have a question and answer segment, but I will have, as time allows, I will have a special podcast that is devoted to all of your questions. And I will announce that to my email list. If you're on my email list, I will announce that there in advance so that you can get your questions in and I can answer them. Answer them. And if not, you can always listen to the, the recording on whatever whatever podcast platform that you use. Okay, with all that being said, we're going to get started here in just a few short moments. If you just give me a moment so I can review my notes and I'll be right with you. So you don't have to be a computer programmer or a coder to make a nice living in with in, with apps or Windows programs or scripts, software as a service type things. You don't have to have you don't have to have any advanced knowledge. You just need to have a general understanding of how everything works, kind of like a general contractor does when you build a house. A general contractor might not know might not know the the entrance to, I can't I never can say that word he might not know how to wire a house for electric but he has a general idea of how it works and he knows how to to find someone who can do that for him he might not know he or she might not know how might not know how to plumb a house put plumbing in a house so it has water but they have a general idea of how it works and they more importantly know how to find someone to get it done for them so it's a lot it's very similar to that in the, the digital world you might not know how to code but you know how to market and that's something that i would focus on depending on your skill level and depending on how much time you want to put into it i mean you might want to learn how to code you might want to learn how to to write your own android app or, or windows software or or script and if you have the time and the patience and the, the 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 background you know i mean i think it's important that you have a solid background you don't i mean you have to you have to start from somewhere so depending on where you are in life it all just depends so it may may behoove you to to learn how to code yourself but i'm going to assume that you're not that is for another podcast another time if that's the route that you want to take. So in this case, we are going to be discussing how to how to build an, an Android app or Windows program or a software as a service, like a script, and how to build that without actually having to code it yourself. And we're going to be doing that by using several different tools so you can save, you can get it done as cheaply as possible because it can be very expensive depending on what you're wanting to build. It can be very expensive to, to get it done, especially when you're when you're hiring out. So I want to give you some tools and some tricks to to maximize your return on investment because I'm assuming that if you're wanting to do this, you're wanting to make money. If you're wanting to do it for your own purposes, like you want to, and that, that happens a lot. I mean, that happens with me. I have no, I, I have, I don't build it myself, but I'll have a script built for my own purposes because there's nothing out there that that satisfies my needs, and I'll have someone build it for me, and I'm not, I have no intention of selling it. So that's going to make the cheaper. That's going to make the the price a little cheaper if that if that's your your end goal is to just have a script built for for whatever needs you want. Like for example, I had one built not that long ago that that takes the that like, takes two keywords. Like it takes I'm gonna, I'm gonna give away the give away the form tell you the, exactly what it does. But anyway, it it's a it searches for domains. And it takes two keywords that and mesh them together because I have like a general. I'm not sure I have to articulate it. Anyway, I have a. I've had someone build a domain keyword finder for a keyword domain finder for me. It meshes two keywords together, 
it sees if it's available if it's available for purchase kind of like it's kind of like an exact domain match tool and those are out there but none that this isn't i needed something a little bit more more um that's what i'm looking for a little bit more specific than that so i had to have someone build it for me so i, I was using it for myself so i didn't need a, a gui like a graphic user interface i didn't need to make it pretty for for the end user i didn't need to make like a, a, a marketing page to to or a web page so i could sell it or any of that kind of stuff that you have to worry about if you're selling it so like i said if that's your end goal you can if you're just wanting to use it for yourself there's a lot of places that you can go to get that done and you won't have to worry about a lot of the little details that i'm going to be discussing tonight so we're going to get started just want to give you like a summary of what we're going to be talking about we're going to be discussing android apps windows applications and software as a service scripts i'll be right with you so people have been selling software for a long long time it first got on my radar like when i was a kid when i was in high school and i had my little commodore 64 computer and i would download like crazy and back then they had and i just want to i want to preface this with you don't have to be bill gates or some big conglomerate or, or big business to, to sell software you can be you know a, a little person like me and probably like you if you're listening to this you don't have to be you don't have to be a big business to, to do this so with that being said people were doing it back then back you know back a long time ago and they they wrote these these soft the software and they sold it on shareware shareware sites and back then when it when it first started i didn't get they didn't you know the world wide web wasn't in its current form so you downloaded it from places like genie delphi CompuServe, and places like that and you would download it for free and they called it shareware so if you liked it they usually have some kind of time limitation on it so you could for you can lose it for 30 days or 10 days or you know 24 hours or just whatever and and after that time you would have to pay for it and i'm not even sure how you know it's a lot easier to to get that set up today back then i'm not sure I'm not sure what how they what what the the how they even how they made that happen, but anyway they did, and you paid for it through, you know through their whatever pay, payment gateway they use, and you know of course I, I bought I bought a few of them back back in the day, and then fast forward to to the mid to late '90s when the World Wide Web came of age, then a lot of download repositories popped up a big one back in the 90s was jumbo.com i have to find out oh does that even still exist and of course and then that was the first one that that really that i paid a lot of attention to so yeah, there's a lot of download repositories and so if you were a software entrepreneur if you're a soft if you if you built software you would upload it to you know these these big uh websites that were a repository for software and it's pretty and another one's download.com or you know there's a lot of them there's a lot of them and and you still can you can what i'm getting ready to mention you can there's software that you can upload your your files to to these download these download the soft these software repositories and people download them and so you know you get you get a lot of all, you know all these downloads and a small percentage of them will pay for your software so that's the that's the, the gist on how the windows software works and the, the history of that well now it's you know you hear it's more about apps and scripts software as a service type stuff 
and although people still do build Windows software, and they, I'm sure they still make money on it, all you have to do is study some of the, the you know, like download.com and, and see that people are still downloading stuff. I'm not sure how much, how, how much, how many of them go on to purchase, but you know, you don't know until you try. So now it's all about apps and scripts. So of course with apps the the main the main source of your downloads which can be you know a bad thing since they they since they kind of have a monopoly on it is the android play store and the google the google store the heck they call it now they change the name every four or five days and but so you upload it there and you can either hope for the best and you know, see if people download it, and you they can either purchase it, or you can put ads on it and make money that way. Which that's what a lot of people opt to do is they put they don't build they don't charge for the app, but they they put ads on it so they have like a a built in audience. It's very similar to you know having a, a television program, and they put commercials in the, the TV program. So it kind of works the same way. If they're, the more, the more times they spend on your app, the more likely they are to engage with your advertisements. So that's pretty much how you monetize an Android app. Either one of the two ways that I just mentioned. So, with a script or a software as a service type thing, and an example of a software as a service script would be a website that keeps track of your rentals, for example. Say you have a portfolio of rentals and you want to keep track of them. You want to keep track of your tenants, how much they pay you, issues, and all that kind of thing. You can do something like that with a rental manager script that's that's exclusively online and you don't typically make money with advertisements do, using a software as a service type you know a script you usually bill monthly for that another example of a software type a software as a service type thing script would be like a phone call recorder, say so for example you wanted to record all your business phone calls and and take notes on them and, and that kind of thing or have them transcribed or or store them or keep them or whatever. You could build a script that will that will that will record your your inbound and outbound phone business phone calls and you can tag them on the website or, or through your phone, you know, that, that that uploads it to the website and just do all kinds of, of different things with that information. You can sync it to a, you know, a CRM, a customer relationship manager, and you just do all kinds of things. So that's another example of a software as a service type script. And like I just said, you would monetize them. Typically, you would monetize a script with a monthly charge, or a or a, a yearly or bill yearly or monthly. There's all kinds of examples of software as a service type scripts. So that sums up the three types of software that you can sell, and that also answers how you can monetize them. With the Windows software, usually pay a one-time fee after a trial period, like 15 to 30 days, and it could be anywhere from $10, $5 on up. With the with Android apps, you monetize it through advertising within the app, or you can charge a a one-time fee, which is usually typically less than $5. It's it's more common to to put advertising in in the apps. The third type of software that you can build are scripts or software as a service. And these reside on a computer and it's, it, it lives completely online. There's no 
Windows software, so anywhere or no software to speak of. So anywhere you have an internet, internet connection in a browser, you can use the script or the software as a service. And typically, you you bill monthly or yearly for that. I it's not common to have advertisements or exceptions as there are with everything, but it's not common to my knowledge that I've seen to to have advertisements on that kind of thing. Usually software as a service type scripts are are for, you know, business type users or, or people that are, are real serious about what they're doing and they're a little bit more advanced. So with all that being said, I will be right with you. We're going to discuss how to build each one of those and how to how to find some tips and tricks to, to build them as inexpensively as possible when you don't know how to code. I'll be right with you. So how do you get these apps built, whether it's Windows software, whether it's an Android app, or whether it's software as a service? Well, there are a couple of different things that you can do, and I'm just going to go over them briefly because, like I said, we only have 30 minutes allotted, and you can find everything that I've mentioned on this podcast at digitpire.com slash episode 34. So there's a few different ways, and the first thing, well, there's two different ways. You can have, you can build it, or you can build it yourself. You can hire someone to build it for you at freelancer.com as a big one or upwork.com, which is a, another big one. And But before you do that, and this is with um, an Android app or, or any of it really, you should look at sourceforge.net and see if it's already done. Because a lot of the the apps and the programs and the the software as a has been done on there, and people just make it to their liking and they upload it to you know the Play Store on Google or just wherever, and they 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 change it up, they add features or they take features away or just make make it their own basically. And they do that completely legally because soft, uh, SoftSourceForge.net is open source. So they do that perfectly perfectly legally. Is that, is that the correct way to say that? I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, that's the first place that, that I would look and see that if it's done there, then you need, when you can find a, a contractor on freelancer.com or upwork.com and you want to make sure that they sign you know agreements that they're not going to basically steal your idea or or you know all the code is yours and they you're, you're not you're not tied to them in any way and you want you want to make sure that you have the entire code you know, you don't want it to be locked up or, or anything. You want to have, you know, pay additional monies to get it. You want to be able to have ownership of the source file, the, the code. You want to have ownership of that. So that's very, very important. And do not hire anyone that will not allow that. Because even though they may have built it, you still need to retain the, the ownership, the, the rights to that intellectual property. And they, both of those platforms have forms that you can that you can send and have them fill out and agree to and, and all that kind of thing. That's not typically a problem. Most people will comply with with that. But you just got to make sure that you have that in place before you even get started. So find something on SourceForge and start posting jo- start posting projects on Freelancer or or Upwork.com, and you know you'll immediately start getting bids. You want to be very, you need you know, look. They give you templates to use, and you want to you want to you want to maybe study some of the past jobs people have posted to get an idea of of how to to post a a good a good a good project. So if you study those, you should 
you should be okay and be able to, you'll be able to put something out that people understand and can go from. So in summary, find something on sourceforge.net, post a job on freelancer or upwork.com and you know, and study other job postings to find out what you know, find out the best way to to post it and make sure that you have all that paperwork in order so that you get your your source code and the source the source files and you have you have ownership of those and you are not bound or you're not tied to that person in any way like you you don't want to be tied to them to continue your business you want once they do the work you want a clean break from them as much as possible and it would not hurt if you have someone else to maybe look through the code to make sure there isn't any funny business you know something that's calling home or stealing your information or anything like that you just can never be too careful so you want to have someone after it's done before you let it go live you want to make sure you want to have someone else independent someone independent from them separate from the person who did it you want to have them look at the code themselves and have them report back to you okay the other route you can take is a white label and it's not as common with windows software there used to be a place where you can you could buy. I'm not even sure if it's still around anymore. I haven't looked at it in a long, long time. There used to be a play, uh, uh, a website where you can buy white label software. And white label is basically someone else builds it, and you just claim ownership to it. So, say for example, I I built a a accounting program, a Windows software accounting program. And I white labeled it, meaning that all the branding you could put your own branding on it. And the only bad thing with that is I own actually own the software, and you're just reselling it. So you're basically a reseller, and you're putting your own branding on it. You don't typically own the source files or any of that kind of stuff that goes along with it. So I'm not even sure if anyone's doing that right now, since you know. Windows software is not nearly as popular as it once was. But it might be something that you, you know, want to Google or something, you know, white label Windows software or something like that. <clears throat> but that's one way that you can, that you can build Windows software. You can also, I haven't seen anything, a white label apps though. I don't, wait, I'm trying to think, Android apps. I'm going to have to look in my, look that up. But you definitely can use a white label script software as a service. Like for example, there, I mean, there's just a million examples, but there are, there is a, there is a a service that that manages um, real estate agents property like shoot manages real estate agent listings. So they offer like marketing tools. Uh, like auto text and and auto reply and messaging services and that kind of thing and it's a and this particular company there's a few of them that do it will offer offers a offer a white label service so you can you can you can market it as your own then again you don't own the rights to the source code or anything like that i mean depending on your needs you might not even that might not even be a concern of yours so there's also white label, you know, property management software, software as a service, property management that you can that you can basically resell with your own branding. So the good thing about all that with white labeling is you don't have to worry about, you know, maintaining the software, building the software, and all the expense associated with that. You can just worry about marketing the software. And that's what a lot of people you know, want to focus on. So it's a lot like a franchise in that regard, similar to a franchise in that in that way. So and it's a lot it's a much easier road to take and get up and started quickly. So for any project that, that I'm interested in, you know, and I have for myself I have so many ideas, there's no way that I would have the time and especially the money to, to pursue everything. But one of the first things that I look for 
I look for it on SourceForge.net and then I look for it a white label solution that I can brand as my own. So once you have once you have built your software or used a white label solution or built it yourself, then it's time to market it and that is another topic for another time. We are quickly running out of time today. So if you have any questions of me about this podcast or any of the past podcasts or any future podcasts or just any questions regarding technology and making money online in general, you can ask them away at digitpire.com slash ask. You can find all of our podcasts at digitpire.com slash podcast and you can find all the the resources that I mentioned today on this show at digitpire.com slash episode 34. Hope all of you have a wonderful rest of your evening and staying warm wherever you may be in the world and I will see you back here the same, actually not the same time, I'll see you back here next week on March 5th at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye-bye.